This is LXBN TV and I'm Colin O'Keefe. The SEC recently proposed a rule that would require companies to disclose the ratio of their CEO's pay to that of the average employee. And, of course, it's elicited some strong reactions. Joining me now to explain the rule and possibly the reasoning behind those reactions is Martin Rosenbaum of Maslon Edelman, Foreman and Brand, an author on the On Securities blog. Martin, first, can you, as best you can, describe this rule in plain English? What does it do, and who does it apply to? Um, okay, sure. Uh, the, the, the proposed rule sounds simple enough. Uh, it's really just three numbers that the company has to disclose in its proxy statement. Number one, the annual total compensation of the median compensated employee. I'll get back to that. Uh, so you got this median employee, that's number one. Number two, the annual total compensation of the CEO. And three is the ratio of those, of those two numbers. So that's pretty simple. But the new twist is finding that median compensated employee. Uh, you can call it a game of where's Ralph, uh, if Ralph is the, that, that magical median employee. So if you've got a global company with 100,000 employees, you've got to find that person who... Uh, the employee, where 50,000 of those uh, employees make more than that person and 50,000 make less. So uh, that's the tricky part. Um, and companies do have a lot of uh, leeway. Uh, Brock Romanek, uh, another commentator, has called it the Burger King proposal. You can have it your way. The, the SEC, there were a lot of concerns about um, uh, whether the company was going to have to examine every employee under a microscope. and company can use some sampling techniques to make it easier, but it's still going to be a challenge. Uh, so in terms of who does it apply to, all public companies other than smaller reporting companies. So uh, other than that, uh, most public companies will, uh, will have this rule apply, starting probably with disclosures in a couple of years, early 2016 for a calendar year company uh, relating to calendar year 2015. I see. And, and then second, the goal of this rule, as I understand it, is to make investors aware of and sensitive to pay equity and to, of course, uh, encourage you know this to be a more prominent issue at the companies themselves. Do you agree there? And, and do you see this rule as being helpful at all uh, with regards to that? Well, that's the, the, definitely the, the purpose of the rule. Uh, this was part of a bunch of compensation provisions added to the Dodd-Frank Act. Uh, in 2010. I, I think based on the theory that the financial meltdown was partly caused by excessive executive comp that was out of control. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, one of the disclosures that's related to trying to keep that in check. Uh, so this number, the ratio that's going to be provided, will give a general uh, idea that CEOs are paid a lot more than the average employee. And I don't think that's going to make any huge uh, news headlines. Uh, or, or be any, you know, really news to a lot of people. Uh, I'm not sure that the ratios themselves individually are going to be very useful to, uh, you know, to make comparisons of companies. They, they may be more useful to uh, spot trends in a particular company over time, but there are going to be so many variations between, you know, a fast food company, an IT company, uh, you know, other types of companies in terms of who are, you know, most of the employees, it's a median. Uh, and you've got to include foreign workers and part-time and temp workers, so that really is going to make it uh, either a lot of variation. I don't think it'll be that uh, useful uh, from that point of view. Um, and I don't think these are numbers that investors are terribly interested in. Uh, th I don't know of any data that links this ratio to, say, corporate performance, which investors would have more interest in. I see. So why then is the rule so controversial? I mentioned there's been some strong reactions to this. You know, why have we seen the response we have? Why is this, again, so controversial? Yeah, I've been reading reaction to these rules since the, the, I mean, really, the rules track the Dodd-Frank provision. So it's really since 2010. I think it's the relationship between the cost of compliance and any perceived benefit. The SEC has tried to balance that in the rule, but it still takes a lot of time. But I think also these, uh, this particular provision was seen as being very politically motivated. Uh, this disclosure was definitely pushed by the labor unions, and I think it's going to, you know, they're going to use it as a way to try to highlight companies that have an especially high ratio, uh, especially the, the AFL-CIO, with the agenda of, again, trying to boost uh, rank-and-file worker pay. 
But uh, in terms of the effort that it's going to create and how big of a drag it's going to be on public companies, I think it'll be a lot of work for a year or two and then not such a big deal. Companies really won't have much impact after that time. I, I see. And then lastly, do you think there is any value in this this pay ratio disclosure rule? Are there any positives to glean from it? You know, is there any value? Well, I always uh, hope that there can be some value in more disclosure. I'm not sure that the uh, the, the benefits of the disclosure itself will outweigh the, the hassle for companies, but again, I think they'll get over it. Uh, the SEC made it clear that companies can uh, make additional disclosures, such as other types of ratios that companies think are more helpful, other descriptions of uh, you know why their practices are the way they are, and as long as the required ratio required in the rules is, is highlighted the right way. So I'm, I'm hoping that companies will take it as an opportunity to explain their compensation policies better, and that's always a good thing. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see how this is implemented and again, and how people continue to react to it, and then, of course, uh, if it does prove useful uh, in any capacity. Once again, that was Martin Rosebaum of Maslon, Edelman, Foreman, and Brand. For more of an insight on this issue and other stories in securities law, be sure to visit OnSecurities.com. And as always, be sure to swing by LXPN.com, of course, if you're not already watching us here. For more of these LXPN TV video interviews and curated commentary from our network of more than 8,000 members. Thank you for joining me today, Martin. Thank you.